itself, January 26, 2021. So now I shall cut into this. As you can see, this box is not very <laughs> neat looking at all. They're probably having a major LOL at the title. Dead Samsung Galaxy Note 4 unboxing, January 2021. But, um,. Yeah, so perhaps I guess I should talk a bit about that while I struggle to get into this because you might be wondering just what on earth is the logic of buying a dead Note 4 when you can buy a working Note 4? Well, unfortunately, most of the working Note 4s, people still want $200. In some cases, you still see some sellers that will actually want like the same retail price, like, like $500, $700, which is just absolutely absurd in 2021. In fact, you go to those worth it value places and they'll tell you that this thing is supposed to maybe be worth it what? Maybe 50 to 60 at most at this point? But still, why so many people want like 150 for it minimum is beyond me. So, I decided to just take the opportunity to get this one even though it clearly wasn't working. Because who knows, just maybe, oh. Look at that. I even get a free case. It's not pretty neat. Wow. Okay, I guess I'll just take a look at this. How does this case work again? Is this a dual layer case? I think it is, I believe. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah. So, just take that out. Oh, wait, is it broken? Yeah, it looks like it's broken. That's quite a shame, but, eh. Still usable, at least this part of it is. Wait, does it have a kickstand? No? no it doesn't look like it's a kickstand. But eh, it still works. Just have to be mindful of that part. And, uh, while I'm putting that back. The real star of the show is this guy. This is the star of the show. So, you can see that it's looking okay, but it does not power on because it has a dead motherboard perhaps? Cosmetically speaking, yeah, he's right. It's actually beautiful, though. Wait, there's some heft to it, so that means that the battery must be in there, because I was under the impression that there's no battery. Now, how do you get inside of this thing, I think? Is this not here? Oh, yes, it does have a battery. It does. Because not as though it doesn't. Sale made in Japan, assembled in Korea. <laughs> what is the point of that? Why don't they just make it and assemblage in Korea, like, what? As far as I'm concerned, it's not as though South Korea isn't short on plants or anything. If anything, they have plants or plenty and lots of them too. Many of them are fully capable of making all sorts of electrical components, like chipsets and you name it. So, I find that kind of odd. Anyway, let's take this out. You can see some more information there. Perhaps I shouldn't even show you it, but eh, whatever. Wait, why did it say SMN910T? Wait, no, SMN910W8 is the model. Okay. Actually, you know what? Yeah, the EMI, I think, is something you really should not see, so that's why you're not actually seeing that. This is S Pen 2. And uh, what else can I do with this guy? What else can I do? Um, I guess I can examine the S Pen a bit. Pretend as though I'm taking notes. No, it doesn't click like the newer ones. Or does it? Oh, actually, yeah, that, this thing does click.
So, okay, where is it far about you? I think it's supposed to be like here, I believe. So yeah, as you can see, it clearly does not power on. And yes, so if it is indeed a motherboard issue, then I'll just have to import uh, SMG, whatever, whatever the new model was. I believe it's 910W8, but yeah, I just have to import that. I think it'll run me anywhere between 27 to 45, which is not bad. So that means a total cost of this comes up to about, wait, how much did I pay for this one? I, I, I got it for 35 and then I think with the shipping and everything, was maybe about 45 so if I do get the motherboard for uh, I think for this particular model it was 44 so perhaps I'm going to be looking at maybe $90 in total which is still not bad considering that many many sellers want between 150 to 200 so even if I did buy a fully working one for 150 I'd still be saving myself uh, well, if you do the math, 150. If you divide 90 from 150, you're looking at 60. That's if you even can get it for that price. Well, actually, no, probably, I may, maybe I could have actually if I just asked around on Kijiji or something or those other websites. I guess the problem was that I was looking at eBay and eBay mainly for Note 4s. I think that was the problem there. Maybe I could have got a fully working one off of like Craigslist or whatever, but. I don't even know. I think even then people would still say, oh, I want $200 for it just because it's a note. And because it's a note, they feel like it just needs to be unjustifiably high, even if it's a six-year-old note. But anyways, why would I want to put myself through the trouble of repairing this thing? Well, the thing is, is that these older smartphones are not actually too difficult to repair. Case in point, I repaired the black version of, I mean, I black, but I, I repaired one of my BlackBerry passports. I took out the camera twice, unfortunately. And for that 15, 20 under a while that's serving as a clock, I replaced the battery. And I think one of my other more recent videos I did this month, I pointed out that I changed the, no, no I didn't change it. Actually, yes, I did change the memory in that Dell over there. I installed two hard drives in that, and I installed a solid state drive for that Dell over there. Yeah, I know it looks kind of weird that I'm pointing and you can't see it, but you know, the camera is only pointed this way, so that's why you cannot see them. I guess I could lift it and point it at them if I really, really wanted to, but eh, this video isn't about Dells, it's about dead Samsung Galaxy Note 4s. Ha 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 ha. Okay, you probably must be really, really annoyed at this point and wonder why I'm just going on and on and on and I'm just not doing anything interesting. Well, okay, you know what? If you want me to do something interesting, how about I attempt to just maybe partially disassemble this, perhaps? Could I do that? Or is that not such a good idea? Well, we can see all the screws and all that visible. Uh, where is that water indicator to let me know if it's been water damaged or not? Would I have to... Probably open the battery again, or do I not have to do that? I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't think I'm gonna be disassembling this right now. Or should I actually put it down and actually just take off all the screws and maybe just take a brief look inside? Should I actually do that? Yeah, perhaps I should just clean up this desk a bit and just get a casual look inside. I think that should make this video much more interesting and worthy of your time. So this isn't exactly as close as I'd like to be. Ideally, I'd probably want to have it more something like this, but uh, I guess this will have to do. I guess if I really wanted, I suppose I could zoom a bit. Can I do that? Oh, yeah, I can, yeah. But will it really affect the quality? Is this going to still be 60 FPS, or is it not? I don't know. That looks like 60 FPS to me. Okay, I think it should be all right. Uh, all right, so let's just cut into it. I believe this is supposed to use T4, so I'm assuming that to be this one, so. 
Yeah, yeah, some of you must be like, seriously, man, can you not just take the screws off, off camera, and then show us after? Yeah, I probably could have done that, but you know what? This felt like showcasing it. And this is probably the wrong screw because it's, nothing is even moving. Or is it the right one? No, 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 this is the wrong one. Oh, joy. Okay, so I'm guessing I would actually have to use... I don't even know, man. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm supposed to use. Okay, I think this is it. Yeah, there we go. See? Yeah, I'm in frame. Yeah, I'm in frame. I was actually actually adjust the zoom so that way I'm not... Uh, I don't know. I don't have... Actually, yeah, I think that should be all right. Yeah, that should be okay. Or at least I would hope so. Just have to be mindful where I am. Oh yes, I didn't go over the specifications for this thing. So I didn't prepare them on a card or on a application or something. So I don't know off the top of my head. All I know is that this one is using Snapdragon. 805 and this screw is being a difficult butt Some of the models do have an Exynos chipset Kind of wanted to get one of those Exynos ones to be honest But I decided you know what I'll actually just go with this one first and then Maybe later get one with Exynos Oh yeah speaking of Exynos that would make it for an interesting discussion because I'm hearing that the Exynos in the newer notes like the I believe the 10 and onward that the Xenos chipsets in those models are drastically inferior to the Snapdragons because I'm hearing that they're throttling very badly. And even when it comes down to photography, apparently that is affected too. So I'm not sure if in the Note 21 they're going to improve it to make it equal to Snapdragon or even better. As I'm hearing all the time that back in the day, Xenos was the one that was better. Or at least equal. That's just what I hear. I know that for the No 4 in particular, that Exynos does. Is that glare obnoxious? I don't know. I wonder if that whole, this whole time that glare was going to be a problem. I don't know. But anyways. Yes, the Exynos on the Note 4, it has 64-bit. Whereas the Snapdragon does not have 64-bit. So, don't know what's up with that. That's a removable battery though. See, it's reasons like this why I still buy old phones because they just have so much charms that these new ones just do not. Oh yeah, I forgot to point to the IR blaster and the headphone jack and this micro SD card slot. That's another area worthy of discussion because the new Samsung Galaxy S21 does not have a micro SD card. Like, honestly now, at this point, the S series has just become an Android flavored iPhone. Like, really? It's like, what's the point? Sooner or later, they're gonna make some deal to have Apple maybe make some runoff Samsung phones using iOS. I don't even know. I don't know if they'll go that far. That sounds far fetched right now. But who knows? Maybe in the future that might become a thing. Okay, why is this screw being so difficult? No, not in a waste of time. I'll come back to it. Seriously, Samsung, oh how far you've gone from your phones being more about the function to just going on and becoming these really formish phones. But don't abandon your function for form, that's not cool. Not cool at all. Okay, this is a lot of screws, man. This is so... This is just... <laughs> wow. But really, though, are we doomed in the smartphone market? Are we ever going to see a flagship phone with a removable battery, IR blaster, and headphone jack? Or is that a thing of the distant past? Now, I know there's one Sony phone that I believe is called... The Sony One Mark II 
that I think is a micro SD card slot and a headphone jack. It doesn't have a move of battery and I don't think it's an IR blaster either. So yes, yeah, the LG series, I know that they too also have headphone jacks and micro SD card slots. So the problem with them though is that they have dumb doofus notches. That Sony phone that I just mentioned, it on the other hand does not. Okay, I think that's supposed to be every screw, it's just this problematic one, so I don't know what I'm gonna do to get it out because it's just not cooperating with me. So uh, I don't know if it's like stripped or whatever. If it's stripped, then that's gonna be a really, really big deal and a serious problem. Okay, I think I need to get this S pin out. I wonder if I can try and lift it now. If not, then yikes, probably just wasted your time. Or maybe not. Actually, it's actually a good thing that I discovered this now because if this thing is indeed stripped, then what that means is that I'll probably have to get a precision screwdriver set to get it out. All right, so ever so unfortunately, it looks like this screw is actually legitimately stripped. So I will have to find a way to get it out. And I think I'll actually just conclude the video there. I was really hoping that I could actually get to this idea so I could take a look at it. And furthermore, to be honest, I wasn't actually entirely sure how to get the midframe off anyway. Like between the time that I was doing that and the time that I came back, I actually had to watch a video to say you separate it. And it involved like digging around here and then like prying it there. So until I actually get a better know-how of how to take this particular phone apart, it's best to just end it here, source the proper parts, the tools, and then I'll do the follow-up video then.